Bluetooth is a technology that has been around for a very long time, arriving in the first mobile phone all the way back in 2001. And it's still massively popular today for wireless hands-free communication and audio devices. But when it comes to the smart home instead of the smartphone, are Bluetooth devices worth considering or are there better options out there? Welcome to Smart Home Protocols, Bluetooth edition. Bluetooth is a wireless networking technology designed by the Bluetooth Special Interest Group and is used in a wide variety of applications from headphones and speakers to fitness trackers, location beacons and smart home devices. Now there are a few different implementations of Bluetooth as we know it today, but the one we are going to focus on in this video is the one commonly used in smart home devices, Bluetooth Low Energy. Bluetooth Low Energy is a specification that first appeared as part of Bluetooth 4.0 back in 2010. It uses the 2.4 gigahertz radio frequency space, just like Wi-Fi and Zigbee, and has a quoted range of 60 meters with Bluetooth 4.0, or 240 meters with Bluetooth 5.0. In reality, that range is more likely to be drastically lower in day-to-day -day use though. Bluetooth uses AES 128-bit encryption, and just like the name suggests, Bluetooth Low Energy was created as a much lower power implementation of classic Bluetooth as a way of making battery-operated devices last much longer. When it comes to Bluetooth low energy, there are two different types of devices that you need to know about, a client and a server. A Bluetooth low energy client is a device such as a smartphone or laptop and is responsible for scanning for connectable devices and initiating requests to those devices so that they can exchange data. A server is a device such as a temperature sensor, fitness tracker, motion sensor, or motorized curtain, basically your smartphone devices, and they receive commands and requests from the clients and send data back to them. When a client, like your phone, wants to talk to a server, like a motion sensor, it starts scanning and listening for any nearby connections. Meanwhile, the server is continuously broadcasting what is called an advertising packet at set intervals that basically tells the client, hey, I'm here. And once the client detects these broadcasts, it will send a request to establish a connection, at which point the two devices can send data to each other. And this type of connection is called a point-to-point -point connection. As of Bluetooth 4.2 and 5.0, meshing capabilities were also added to Bluetooth to extend the physical range of the network, as well as allow multiple devices to be connected and controlled simultaneously as one. Take these smart curtains, for example. They are two separate Bluetooth units, yet they are connected and controlled as if they were a single one. Bluetooth is a hugely popular protocol with billions of devices out there that have Bluetooth in them. But when it comes to the smart home, what are some of the good sides and downsides to using Bluetooth? Firstly, the good stuff. As we talked about and is literally in the name, Bluetooth is very low energy and SIPs power since BLE devices will remain asleep in a low power state for most of the time. BLE will also turn on its radio as few times as possible by dividing a connection into spaced intervals. Both of these things really help to push and extend the battery life to months and even years on a single battery. Bluetooth also has a really low barrier to entry, firstly because the cost of devices and sensors are generally pretty low. But also many smart home devices don't require the purchase of an additional hub to actually use them. Because Bluetooth has been built into pretty much every smartphone for pretty much a decade, there's a good chance that you can get up and running with a Bluetooth device by simply downloading an app on your phone. Of course, if you want to access these devices when you're away from your house, you'll need a hub to connect Bluetooth devices to your home network, but it's entirely possible to get started with Bluetooth with only a single device. Bluetooth Low Energy is also really useful for being able to be used as an indoor positioning system. A Bluetooth beacon can broadcast a signal continuously, which can be used to approximate the beacon's location, allowing you to run smart home automations based on the room you're in, a really useful feature to have. This means that Bluetooth devices can actually be moved around and don't have to be in a fixed position, unlike some other mesh networks like Zigbee and Z-Wave, where the device is meant to remain in one location. Finally, because Bluetooth is so popular and built into so many devices, that does mean that it has really broad and also great compatibility. 
Our phones, computers, laptops, tablets, cars, all have Bluetooth in them that just works with every other Bluetooth device. And Bluetooth can also have multiple implementations in one device too. Our phones, for example, have Bluetooth Classic as well as Bluetooth Low Energy in the same device. And also newer versions of the Bluetooth protocol are backwards compatible with older versions too. But Bluetooth does have some notable flaws with the first one being its speed. Bluetooth Low Energy is limited to a theoretical max of one to two megabits per second, which is certainly more impressive than Zigbee and Z-Wave's lower throughput, but it's still not great and will limit the use cases that Bluetooth can actually be used for. Again, no video applications here. But as always, you're probably not even going to run into any issues when it comes to that speed, because smart home devices generally don't need a lot of bandwidth. Range can also be a big problem for Bluetooth devices, with the real world range more likely to be in the five meter ballpark. Now, I did mention Bluetooth mesh capabilities earlier, which can certainly help improve the range. The problem is that unlike Zigbee and Z-Wave, which are primarily mesh networks from the get-go, Bluetooth doesn't have to be implemented as a mesh. And in cases where you are connecting directly to Bluetooth devices, you'll find the range to be quite limiting, at least in my experience. Interference can also be a big problem for Bluetooth since it does use the same radio frequency as Wi-Fi and Zigbee. Not to mention the sheer number of devices that also contain Bluetooth in them themselves. Mice, keyboard, headphones, laptops, tablets, TVs, soundbars, controllers, and so many more devices all have Bluetooth in them that could potentially cause interference. But Bluetooth's biggest problem from my experience is just how slow it is to respond to commands when compared to other protocols like Zigbee, Z-Wave and Wi-Fi. For devices such as motion sensors and lights where you want and need an immediate response for things to feel natural, Bluetooth just doesn't really stack up here and can cause really noticeable delays. What's almost even more annoying is the variation in latency. Sometimes it's relatively quick to respond and then the next time it's incredibly slow. A very frustrating experience. For devices where a few hundred milliseconds to sometimes nearly a second delay isn't a big deal, such as for temperature sensors, then it's not going to matter too much, but otherwise it can and is a real deal breaker for Bluetooth. So that is everything you need to know about Bluetooth, but is it a smart home protocol worth considering? Well, for one thing, you've probably realized by now that I never like to blanket statements say that you should never use something. There are always use cases and situations where something is worth considering and Bluetooth is no different. But in my opinion, for most situations, I do think that Zigbee, Z-Wave and Wi-Fi are better and more suitable alternatives and probably worth thinking about first before considering Bluetooth. But that's just my opinion. I'd love to hear your opinion down in the comments. Do you like Bluetooth? And are you currently using Bluetooth in your smart home? Let me know down below and drop this video a like while you are down there. Really interested to hear your thoughts as always. And if you're interested to hear more of my thoughts, make sure to check out the next video in this series where we are going to be talking about a newer upcoming challenger protocol called Threat. Make sure to get subscribed so you don't miss that. And I will see you in the next video.